that you have answered all the 10 questions within 10 minutes this is of cat mock test series part 3 okay so you'll be seeing i think you have seen the questions 10 questions now we are going to see the solutions a lot of people is going to write the afcat examination so that's why i'm including back to back videos on afcat we'll be doing mock test series of isr technical assistant examination gate examination and also ugc net examination so for those people we'll be doing videos don't worry so the uh, solutions moving on to the solutions the truth table the first question is the truth table of sr flip flop has how many valid entries so this question is from digital electronics uh, so the question is regarding sr flip flop so uh, before seeing the answer we'll first write the truth table of sr flip flop it is like this qn plus 1 state is there s and r states is there 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 are the combinations for 0 0 the output is previous state 0 1 is a reset then 1 0 is set and 1 1 is undefined okay so this is a very simple truth table of sr flip flop for 0 0 the output is a previous state for 0 1 the output is reset here you can see it is the reset condition active for 1 0 the output is 1 because uh, not 1 it is set because set set condition is active 1 1 is undefined entry so these are the various combinations of your s and r and these are the output and if you see the output you can see that only three outputs is valid right one is unstable or undefined condition which is considered as an invalid condition right so how many uh, entries are valid here three entries right now let us see the options a is one b two c three d four correct answer is option c which is three so sr flip-flop is having only three valid entries have this thing in mind can also come uh, as a theory question okay again this is the theory question only but just have an idea of this sr truth table and its valid entries moving on to the next question okay the question number two is again from digital electronics so this video that is a part three i've made a little bit difficult as compared to the part one and part two okay so uh, as we move on the questions will get difficult and difficult okay initial videos will be having simple questions okay so moving on to the second question how many types of sequential circuits are there so you know that in digital electronics you can classify the circuits as combinational circuits that is the circuit without a memory example are adders and all are uh, combinational circuits now there is sequential circuit means the circuits which is which is having a memory element also okay now how can you classify the sequential circuits that is a question uh, no actually how many types of sequential circuits are there that is a question there are two type of sequential circuits and the sequential circuits can be classified as sequential can be classified as asynchronous and synchronous okay now what is an asynchronous one what is a synchronous one in the case of an asynchronous sequential circuit it doesn't have a clock means no clock okay but for a case of synchronous one it is having clock so this is a classification of a sequential circuit in digital electronics they can be classified as the sequential circuits with clock and without clock that is asynchronous and synchronous so how many types are there there are only two types this is a broad classification okay so in that also you can have sub classifications okay anyway just know that there are two broad classifications of sequential circuits which are two types that is the synchronous one and the asynchronous one correct answer here is option a2 okay again just know that there are two type of digital circuits which are combinational and sequential okay moving on to the third question an electric current let me just remove this question okay i'm going to write the third question or we are going to discuss the third question an electric current of 10 ampere is same as dash it is a hypothetical uh, like it is uh, a relative question i'll tell you so there is a electric current 10 ampere so the current value is 10 ampere how can you represent this in simple terms okay a 10 joule per coulomb 
No, you can you cannot write current as joule means energy. Energy by charge? No, you cannot write. B, ten volt per coulomb? No. C, ten coulomb per second. Coulomb is charge. Second is time. Yeah, you can write current as rate of change of charge or rate of flow of charge. Right. Last one D, ten watt per second. What is power? Power per time is it current? No, it is not current. Okay. So the option correct here is ten coulomb per second. Now how this is coming? We'll see. Okay. So while discussing the very initial definition of current, we have studied that current is the rate of flow of charge. Right. So I is equal to Q by T, flow of charge. Per unit time or the rate of flow of charge. So this is Q by T. Now what is the unit of Q? Q is coulomb. We can write it as C. Time standard unit is second. So this is coulomb per second. So you can write this is equal to ampere. Ampere can be written as coulomb per second also. So you can replace 10 ampere with 10 coulomb per second. Very simple, right? You just have to apply your logic here. Correct answer is option C, 10 coulomb per second. You can face a lot of these type of questions in AFCAD examination. Just simple questions, but applying your intelligence actually. Okay. Moving on to the fourth question. Here the correct answer is option C. Okay. Moving on to the fourth question. Let me remove the third question first. Moving on to the fourth one. In which of the following case is Ohm's law not applicable? So we are going to discuss about Ohm's law and how and which of these cases Ohm's law not applicable. A. Electrolyte. B. Arc lamps. C. Insulators. D. Vacuum. Vacuum ratio valves. Okay. So here the correct answer is C. Insulators. Insulators. Now, why it is not applicable? I'll, I'll say what is the definition of Ohm's law? Ohm's law means V is equal to I into R, right? So, the Ohm's law definition, if you see, for a conductor, it starts like that, okay? For a conductor or a conducting material at constant temperature, the voltage is the product of current and resistance okay so that is the equation or the definition for ohm's law v equal to ir right so in this definition which is applicable only for conductors it is not applicable for insulators and another important factor i'm not saying the exact definition of ohm's law but it is it is like this it is starting like for a conducting material or for a conductor Okay, so that is the definition. So in that, we are very specifically saying it is for conductors, not for insulators. So you cannot apply Ohm's law on an insulating material. So correct answer is option C. And also another important thing which many people or many students miss out is that. See, the, the temperature of this conductor which you are discussing should be at room temperature or it should be constant if the temperature is increasing you know that there can be carrier variations or uh, carrier generation recombination all these things happens right for temperature changes or temperature variations so constant temperature or at room temperature that is also again specific but this question is regarding to the material nature and Ohm's law is not applicable for insulators. Correct answer is option C, insulator. Moving on to the fifth question. The fifth question is again regarding to resistance of a... The fifth question is, which of the following bulbs has high resistance? A, 220 volt, 60 watt. So the voltage and the power rating is given. Okay, in, uh, in the four options, you can see the voltage and power rating of the four bulbs. Okay. And out of which, out of this four, which one has high resistance? A, 220 volt, 60 watt. B, 220 volt, 100 watt. C, 115 volt, 60 watt. D, 150 volt, 100 watt. Now, how to find this? You should know the relations between voltage and resistance and also power and resistance, right? So, because the for both the, uh, I mean, for all the four bulbs, 
uh, the voltage and power is given so you have to uh, make a comparison between the resistance and voltage and also the voltage uh, the resistance and the power so the relation is you should know the relation that power p is equal to v square by r right so if p is equal to v square by r consider that power is constant if power is constant value then r is proportional to v square right also this is one relation and we also know if you are taking voltage is constant then p or we'll take r equal to 1 by p or 1 by power so this is the two relations which you should keep in mind in order to select the combination r is proportional to v square so v has to be maximum maximum voltage and power is inversely proportional to resistance so the resistance in order to find the maximum value power has to be minimum so from this four combination you have to select the combination with maximum voltage minimum power which is that the correct answer is option a 220 volt 60 watt from these four values four options the voltage maximum is 220 and the minimum power is 60 so that is coming for option a and that is having the maximum resistance okay so out of this four bulbs a bulb has a maximum resistance correct answer is option a moving on to the sixth question the sixth question is connecting to the bluetooth okay it is actually from computer networks bluetooth is an example of dash okay option a private area network b local area network c virtual private network d wide area network the correct, correct answer is it is a private area network okay a private area network and you should know that it is having bluetooth is having a range of 10 meters it can work uh, properly up to 10 meters and it is operating at a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz okay it is again a ieee standard medium of communication and it is a private area network correct answer is option a the next question which is question number 7 the register question number 7 the register that provide control and status information of counter so this is a question from 8051 okay so which of the register is holding the control and uh, status information of the counters we know that 8051 has two 16 bit timer come counters we have done a detailed video on the timers and timer registers in which we have discussed about counters also which is having the control and status information of counters which register a ip no it is interrupt priority it is for interrupts b t mode yeah t mode is the register which holds the control and status information of counter then c ts cone there is no ts cone register in 8051 then d p cone p cone is not meant for counters okay correct answer is option b t mode okay so in this there is a uh, field called c bar t bar and also you can select the modes of the various timers so these fields are actually present in this t mode register okay in the microprocessor and microcontroller playlist you can find a separate video on the the timer counter of 8051 okay please do watch it in which we have uh, discussed in detail about the t mode register correct answer for seventh question is b t mode register next question which is question number 8 Question number eight: If one twenty coulomb of charge passes through an electric conductor in sixty seconds, the current is dash. Very simple question. Q is equal to one twenty coulomb. T is equal to sixty seconds. This is not actually uh, T. It is B T. In in sixty second means it is the time change within this time. This one twenty coulomb is passing. So what is the Value of current, current equal to dQ by dt actually. So dQ by dt, rate of change of charge with time. That is one twenty coulomb by change of time is sixty. So it is two amperes, right? Correct answer is B. Two amperes is the value for current. That is the question number eight. Next question we are going to discuss is question number nine. let me make some space for writing that question question number 9 is 
A carrier is simultaneously modulated by two sine waves of modulating indices 0.4 and 0.3. The resultant index is dash. Okay, here a carrier is going to be modulated by two waves which is having two different modulation indices. And what will be the resultant modulation index for the wave? So, the equation is alpha square is equal to m1 square plus m2 square or the resultant modulation index alpha is the square root of the squares of the individual modulation indices. Please note this down. Here m1 is 0.4, m2 is 0.3. So, the resultant of this will be the square, take the squares and then sum and then take the square root. Okay. So, it will be square of 0 0.4 square plus 0 0.3 square is equal to will be get square root of 0 0.5 square that is equal to 0 0.5. So, this is your result and modulation indices. Consider that there are n number of now consider that there are n number of modulation indices m1, m2 like that. Then in that case this will go up to mn square. Okay. So, this is the equation. In order to find the re resultant modulation index, you have to take the squares of individual, take the sum and then take the square root. So, please note this equation. Correct answer for the ninth question is option C, 0 0.5. Moving on to the last question, which is question number 10. So, question number 10 is, the electrons from the valence band rises to conduction band when the temperature is greater than 0 Kelvin. This is actually a true or false type question. You cannot find true or false type question, but I have included one of this kind. Okay, so you can expect four options. Anyway, the electrons from the valence band to conduction band will move, that is electrons move from valence to conduction band if the temperature is greater than 0 Kelvin. The correct answer is true. A true is the correct answer because whenever there is a temperature change, the electrons, valence electrons will break the bond and they move to conduction band and then they start conducting. Correct answer is A true. Okay. So, these are the 10 questions which I have included in this video. I really hope that you found this video useful. Uh, a lot of questions I try to include from various different subjects which you can actually face in your examination EKT. Okay, so if you found it useful, please do uh, give it a thumbs up and share this video with maximum of friends who is preparing for FCAT examination. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.